we strongly recommend that if you have any opioid prescription whatsoever, that it stays locked up. So one of the recommendations that we've been giving is to treat opioid prescriptions just like you would a firearm if you have a child in the house. So we don't want them within reach of anyone who really visits your home. We don't want someone to be able to walk in your home and easily find it. Opioids are a class of drugs that include powerful prescription pain relievers that bind to opioid receptors in the body to relieve pain. However, these drugs, prescription and illegal, carry significant risk for addiction and overdose. Education is one key to combating the devastating consequences of opioid addiction, and K-State Research and Extension has produced an eight-page fact sheet on opioids. On today's Sound Living, what everyone needs to know about the opioid crisis. Sound Living is a weekly public affairs program produced by Research and Extension at Kansas State University. I'm Jeff Wickman. The Opioid Crisis, What You Need to Know, is an extension fact sheet by adult development and aging specialist Aaron Yelland that aims to educate people about opioids and the associated risks. One of the things that we realized when we started writing this fact sheet and wanting to get information out to individuals is that it was really hard to find all the information that the general public might want to know about opioids in one place. So we have attempted to do that with this fact sheet and put in a lot of information about what opioids are. How do people take them? Where do they come from? What are the signs of addiction and overdose? And how can I help someone? What should my community be doing to address this crisis? So really, it covers a whole lot of information. Sometimes we're so used to hearing about opioids on the news that we might just think it's the illegal drug heroin, but it's not. It includes those very powerful prescription pain-relieving medications as well, things like Vicodin and Percocet, all of those hydrocodone pills as well. Those all fall into the classification of an opioid. And in this fact sheet, we have listed the most common opioids. We also list their street names. A lot of times these are prescribed for something that is going to be just a short-term medication, but it often turns into more than that. It absolutely can. So we see a lot of folks get prescribed an opioid medication legitimately from their doctor after they've had an acute injury, illness perhaps. So say you go and break a bone, you might be prescribed an opioid medication to help you manage that pain for a short amount of time. But what we know is that people can get addicted to opioids in as little as seven days. So if your doctor prescribes you a two-week regimen of this medication, there's a chance that you might become addicted to it if you do not take it according to the doctor's prescribing guidelines. So there's a real substantial risk associated with taking opioids and becoming dependent on them and becoming addicted to them. Do we know what it is that is in the opioids that make them so addictive? Yes, we do. So basically, when you take an opioid, there's a specific receptor that is activated, and the medication in that opioid prescription attaches to that receptor. And that sort of is what gives us this really good, pleasurable feeling and what some people might consider to be a high. And that is what gets people coming back for more. Then we see that people become tolerant to it. So if they're taking an opioid prescription for a certain amount of time, their body might require more of the medication in order to receive the same effect. So we see people who are addicted to opioids taking very large amounts of them, which is really when we're seeing the most overdoses. Are there some signs that we can be looking for either for ourselves if we're taking them or for others in the family? So if you ever have an inclination in yourself that there is something going on and you feel like, gosh, I'm really craving that medication, get a hold of your doctor immediately. Many doctors do not recommend cutting some medications cold turkey, and that might be the case in your situation. So they might need to wean you off the medication or get you onto another medication that's going to help you appropriately manage that pain. But within yourself, always be aware of how you're feeling when you take that medication. And if you're feeling that desire to have more, 
talk to yourself about it and say, hey, you know, this is not a good pattern. This is not something that I want to have happen in my life. So I need to do something about it. So be proactive in your own health care. Now, with other people in your family, some signs to watch out for. Obviously, if people are having some drug-seeking behaviors, meaning that they're, they're looking through your medicine cabinets or they're asking you about certain medical conditions that you might have that maybe seems a little bit fishy, that might be a little bit of a warning sign that something might be going on. But obviously, if people are showing some severe signs of withdrawal or even addiction as well, that can be a serious warning sign. We also see with many individuals who become addicted to opioids, because opioids can cause severe constipation, people who are addicted to them often have severe constipation. So one of the big signs that many people warn about is seeking large amounts of laxatives or drinking large amounts of the laxatives that you can stir into your morning cup of coffee. That might be a warning sign. And actually, there are prescriptions that are out there specifically intended to treat opioid-induced constipation. So that's one of those weird signs that many people may not want to talk about, but it's a very real sign that something might be going on. This kind of brings us to the aspect of needing to protect your prescriptions whenever you have medicines that have been prescribed specifically for you. You need to put those in a safe place, and sometimes it needs to be a locked cabinet. Yes, and we strongly recommend that if you have any opioid prescription whatsoever, that it stays locked up. So one of the recommendations that we've been giving is to treat opioid prescriptions just like you would a firearm if you have a child in the house. So we don't want them within reach of anyone who really visits your home. We don't want someone to be able to walk in your home and easily find it. We want to keep them locked up. Many pharmacies are now selling locked medicine, little cases or boxes or even little bags that you can put a padlock on. Doing steps like that can help limit a person's ability to get access to your drugs. Now, obviously, if someone is desperate enough, we know that they can break into those things. But really putting the step in place to protect people from getting unauthorized access to your medications is very beneficial. And of course, we want them out of reach and inaccessible from children as well. So children most likely aren't going to be able to break into your medication lockbox and get access to those pills, but they can grab a pill bottle off the counter. So we want to make sure that those are absolutely stored in safe places. And if what I've said so far doesn't convince you, remember that a single dose of some opioid medications is enough to kill a small child. Along those same lines, once your prescription has run out, if you have leftover pills, those need to be either disposed of or, again, locked up. Yes. So the two biggest things that we have really been pushing when we've talked about opioids is two things that you can do today. You can safely store the medications that you do have in your home, whether they're opioids or not. We really don't want people getting their hands on medications, period. But secondly, dispose of them properly. Many of us, if we went into our medicine cabinets right now, we might find a whole lot of expired pills or pills that we were prescribed for something and then we stopped taking it and they're just sitting around. So what are we doing with those and what is the risk of having those around? There are many ways that you can safely dispose of your pills and we especially want to make sure that those opioid prescriptions are getting out of the house as soon as you are done taking them. So some ways that you can dispose of them, many police departments are now offering take back days as well as having a more permanent take back location in their facility. If they don't, they will know who in the community is able to take back those prescriptions. Some pharmacies will take back prescriptions from you at any time, no questions asked. There are also some medication disposal bags that you can get. You can purchase those from many pharmacies and big box stores, but you may also be able to get them for free from different agencies that are helping to really combat this opioid crisis. Can any of these be flushed? Flushing medications is a really sensitive topic for many people because, of course, we don't want these medications polluting our environment and getting into the water system. However, if you have absolutely no other way of properly disposing of an opioid medication, the Federal Drug Administration does have a list, a very small list of medications that should be flushed if you have no other way of getting rid of them. That is solely because this list 
list of medications is enough to kill or significantly harm a small child should they get their hands on that medication and ingest it. So we really do not want people flushing, but if you have no other alternative and you have a high-powered opioid in your house, get rid of it. Now, if you don't have access to other safe disposal opportunities, you can get rid of medications safely in your household trash. So first of all, you want to take the label off of the medication bottle and completely destroy it. Use your black permanent marker, rip it, burn it, do something, get rid of it. So people who might get into your trash don't know what types of medications you may have in your home. Then you're going to want to take the medication itself and mix it with an undesirable substance. So the most common substances that are recommended are used kitty litter or even used coffee grounds. And you're going to want to put that undesirable substance in a zippy bag with the medication, mix it up, and then put it in your regular household trash. So those are two ways that you can dispose of medication today in your home safely. One of the other things that's part of this fact sheet is steps that individuals and communities can be taking to address the crisis. And a lot of that has to do with just opening up the conversation. Yes. So K-State Research and Extension across the state of Kansas has been hosting many forums and just talking events about the opioid crisis. So we have hosted two now on campus for K-State Research and Extension employees where we've brought in professionals who are aware of the crisis and who are working in different areas to address the crisis as a professional development opportunity for us. Now we've had several extension agents go back and take that same model and implement it in their community. So they've brought in law enforcement, behavioral health specialists, pharmacists, representatives from their local hospitals, first responders to really talk about what they're seeing in their community, provide resources for their local community members, and get the conversation started on steps that their community should be taking to either currently address the crisis that's happening or to prevent future increases in numbers. And because this is an addiction, we know that this is going to be something that is going to be hard to shake and something that we're going to have to stay on top of for probably many years. Absolutely. So this isn't something that is occurred overnight. This opioid crisis has been building up for years and years and and decades, really. And so it's not something that's going to go away overnight either. So this is really going to take a sustained and, and prolonged approach to really address this crisis in our country and in our state. So we're going to need to work together to prevent the crisis, but also address those individuals who are currently struggling and find the resources to help people overcome this addiction. It is an addiction. People cannot drop it just because they want to. You know, many people are going to need and require medication-assisted therapies to help come off of the medication safely. But one of the things that we're really seeing a need for is for people to understand that it's okay and that it's okay to ask for help and it's okay to have a problem. We all have problems in our lives. Whether yours is addiction or not, it's okay to ask for help and okay to recognize it and to talk about it. And so we need to promote that empathy in our communities. We need to also be talking about resources and just educating each other on what these opioids are. I can't tell you how many times I've gone into communities and have talked about opioids and people come up to me afterwards and say, oh my gosh, Erin, I had no idea that I was taking an opioid medication and my grandkids are in my house all the time and they have access to these dangerous pills. So simply talking about the opioid crisis and educating one another on what opioids are can make a huge difference in the state of Kansas. The fact sheet, can it be obtained just through extension offices or is it also available online? Both. So you can obtain it from your local K-State Research and Extension office, but I also encourage you to look for it online. So if you get on your favorite search engine and type in opioid crisis, K-State Research and Extension, it is likely to come up. And the title of the fact sheet is is the opioid crisis, what you need to know. So in that fact sheet, you're going to have a whole lot of information, again, on what opioids are, how people take them, what people are calling them, but also those warning signs of addiction and abuse, steps that you can take to help individuals in your family or your community. 
and also understanding steps that you can take today to safely store and dispose of your medications. That's Erin Yellen, an adult development and aging specialist with K-State Research and Extension. Again, for more information, contact the nearest Extension office or search online for the publication, The Opioid Crisis, What You Need to Know. Sound Living is a weekly public affairs program produced by Research and Extension at Kansas State University. I'm Jeff Wickman, and this is the K-State Radio Network.